Today's episode is brought to you by Native. If you want to smell good and do it in a more healthy way, Native is the right choice for you. Get yourself some scents, some deodorants, some uh, body washes. I was trying to rhyme those all together, <laughs> I but I failed. Tell. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> also today we're brought to you by Quip. Don't be a dip. Get the Quip. <laughs> Electric toothbrush will change your brushing habits and make your day so much better. Now let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Cox and Friend Dog. This is Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. Live, 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 live. Before our recording studio audience. Recording. Wake your ass up. It's the next Friend Dog in the morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the exciting episode of Cax and Crendo in the morning. <laughs> After 10,000 years, have you returned to face the Power Rangers? What's going on over there? <laughs> and limited power. Oh, you have limited um, power? That's probably I do true. have limited power. <laughs> I got like a couple hours of power and then I'm down for the count. Yeah, wow. Uh, we were just talking about how the end, like the beginning of this year has been very, I don't know, draining, I guess is the right way to put it. It's so like, like January, I don't mind. February, it's like, all right, once you get to like the end of February, it's that point where it's like we're a few weeks away from the clock's going forward again getting more daylight like we already got more daylight but like it's you just want it to happen already and it's like still kind of cold and it's like the the heat's starting to push through like today it was like 50 something i'm like nice but then tomorrow's gonna be like 30 and i'm just like just stay at the 50s man yeah i guess i don't have that problem where it's there's cold weather so you want to like hibernate i don't know for some reason maybe it's the the amount of sunshine in the day or whatever it is but January and February, I have had no desire. You can even see it from my creative <laughs> output on the internet. I've had no desire to do anything. I'm like, you know what? What if I just <laughs> didn't do anything today? You know, spent some me time and just like went to the library. Stuff like that. <laughs> Things that I haven't done in years. I'm like, now you're living the Crendor life. I know. It's weird. <laughs> it's It doesn't feel natural. I'm like, I should be working. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I need like those moments to just get me going. Like, if I'm like, I got to work, I'm like, oh, my God. This is why I do this job, so I don't have to work. So uh, I got to, like, go to the library. I got to go to, like, container store. I got to go to Ikea, walk around the mall. Because that, like, gives me energy. So I'm like, all right, you know. You, like, see people out and about doing their thing. They're working. They're going around. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. And I, like, feed off that energy from other people. Oh, so you're, like, an energy vampire. Yeah, pretty much. I'm bad at acquiring <laughs> yeah. my own energy. Right, right, right. I I have plenty of energy. I just need like I need a minute to get revved up. <laughs> You're like a lawnmower. Yeah, you need to yank my <laughs> crank a few times to get me <laughs> yeah. going. But once that happens, I'm like, vroom, baby. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, how do you how do you go about yanking that crank? Well, uh, you know, it involves not being on the internet. I realized I realized lately that. <laughs> I'll wake up and like look at Twitter. Oh, yeah, that's be, a bad idea. Oh, I know. I'm I'm aware <laughs> of this now. I'd wake up and I'd look at Twitter and be like, everything I do sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the problem is 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 the people I follow are most of the time either friends mm -hmm. or people that I've met at events or people that I've worked with, right? Right. And so the problem is is I will then see people that I know. Be like, today I was in Japan for three weeks and I met uh, the ancestor of the first emperor and we had tea and then we went and drove Mario Karts together. And then I took this photo of me climbing Mount Fuji and then and like crazy shit. And I'm just <laughs> like, I will probably make a video today. <laughs> like, ah, like, oh, man. Right? And it's, it's, it's one of those things where I think you need to except that your life is, like, good the way it is. You should be really thrilled about what you have rather than, like, look at people who – I think we all know. We all know that everyone posts their best stuff online. Like, oh, no one's yeah. posting the other parts of that fake Japanese trip where they're, like, you know, got stuck in line at the airport for five hours. Like, no one posts that stuff. 
Yeah, I probably would. <laughs> you would. This is why I follow. <laughs> um, but most of the time, it's people posting their best days and their best photos in like awful filters and shit. And they're doing it, I think, I'm going to say because they're awful people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to put anyone on blast, but a certain someone who will remain nameless, Yeah, she follows all these people on the internet and hates them. I'm like, why are you following them? And she's like, well, because they're my friends. I'm like, but you hate them. <laughs> she's like, yeah, well, I hate them because they show off so much. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, well, they post all these photos and they all look beautiful. And so it makes me want to post photos. So I have to post photos to compete with their photos. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, like, that sounds terrible. And she's like, it is terrible. I'm like, then why do you do it? She's like, well, if I don't do it, then I become irrelevant. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. And that's the route I think I'm, I'm headed down. I have to avoid it. I have I think to get just, out. My strategy is I just live in irrele irrelevancy and I dwell in it. And that makes me less uh, or makes me more relevant to live in irrelevance. Uh, I, whatever the hell you just said probably <laughs> means something. You're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, like, for, like, half the people I follow are muted. <laughs> if I just see some, I'm just like, oh, I'm going to mute him. Like, I don't block anybody. Like, I'm not that person. Like, I don't care enough to actually block someone, but I mute a bunch of people. I'm not really a big Twitter person. I almost was just like, uh, like, sometimes I just go on Twitter just to be like, what's everyone doing now? Like, they did the intimidation thing. Mm -hmm. So, I, like, I was, was tweeting about that. But, like, aside from that, like, I don't care. You also did the uh, the intimidation tweet thing. I did, I did do the intimidation tweet. Yeah, I did that. Uh, I definitely put you at a one. Yeah, I have you're no like intimidation. A, you're like a, I just called you the lighthouse beacon of social interaction. You Thank like you. just stand there and it's like you're a lighthouse bringing the ships in. I don't understand it, but <laughs> I feel like I should be able to use it against people. I need to learn how to do you're that. Just, <laughs> well, you're just like the jolly old goofball guy that's just yeah everybody the jolly old go i'm the jolly old goof well i remember there's time i was a jolly young goofball guy now i'm the jolly old goofball guy oh no, i was just thinking uh i said it before <laughs> but like when we first met i was like you were my age now and yeah. now i have reached the age you were when we met and now you i don't i think it was before that was it maybe you were like 29 or something i was when we first met I, yeah, I was either 28 or 29, yeah. I think I was 21 then. Damn. Damn, yeah. damn, damn. Yeah, sounds about right. Here's yeah, the I've thing, though. If you look at the old pictures, <laughs> I look like I am, may, we look like goofball kids. <laughs> oh, you look yeah. like you came right out the elementary school, and I look like <laughs> I am like a teenager who has never shaved before. I'm like, oh, jeez, mister. Uh, yeah. We look so goofy. It's ridiculous. What would I you was rate? like, how... <laughs> Well, what would you rate my intimidation? Your intimidation? I said uh, I was a five. Here's the thing. Depending I, on the day. I'm influenced by the fact that I know you. <laughs> That's true. If you were like a slim door, right. you'd be a one. Right. But you, but now you're buff door. You, you're right. You're at least a five. At least a five. That's because a now you have this look about you that sort of says like, I could kill a person. Yeah. <laughs> don't say yeah I could I could kill a person it's, but you have uh, that look you have that look that you could you could violently hurt a person now and I think that's a little intimidating to people it also depends on my pain scale for that day if my like IBS gastritis my like sinuses or something are flared up I'm not gonna be in good mood I'm not gonna look happy and I'm probably gonna be like a 6 or a 7 but if I got like no pain I'm gonna be a little more like hey so I'd probably drop it down to like a 4 I could be in the worst mood ever. I could be ready to physically hurt people. And people would still come up to me and be like, <laughs> Hey, man, you want to give $5 to charity? I'm like, how am I the approachable one? There's eight of us here. Why are you coming to me? Every time. I don't know what it is. I am a magnet to people asking for money, to people who want to know my thoughts on things, to people canvassing the neighborhood, to like religious people who are like, do you want to know the good word? For some reason, they all think I'm the guy to talk to. <laughs> and I don't know why. I don't know what I've done to make it so they think like, yeah, let's go approach that guy. Maybe it's because I do. Maybe it's because I, I, I'm like, all right, I'll listen. It's probably it. 
Yeah, you know, it's all getting explained. Don't now. want to though, but I'm like, all right, I'll listen. Well, today, do you think they all talk to each other? Oh yeah, no doubt. They have like a coalition. <laughs> the coalition to bug Jesse. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like, all right, he's gonna be at Ralph's Friendly Market <laughs> this Sunday. Get him, guys. <laughs> they like get out of their van. They all line up. <laughs> yeah, and the worst part is, it's always, it's never anything real, right? Like, it's never anything like the Girl Scouts. Be like, sir, oh, do you yeah. want some cookies? It's never that. It's always just like, hey, man, I'm I'm trying to get into uh, school as a uh, artist. A and rock I have a artist. Portfo- I paint rocks. Yeah, he's like, I have a portfolio. <laughs> it's like, and you, you see the portfolio and it's like sketches, uh, like really <laughs> bad sketches. Like, I'm trying to go to school, man. And it's in a notebook that is clearly stolen from like a fifth grader. <laughs> he's just like, they kicked me out a few times because I was too good, but I'm trying to get yeah. back. <laughs> I, I honestly feel like that's me every time I go out anywhere. People are just like, hey, man, I got these. One time I was in downtown LA. A guy walks up and was like, hey, man. I have all these necklaces. You want a gold necklace? I'm like, what? <laughs> no, I'm good, dude. And he's like, all right, well, if you come back this way, I'll have some watches later. I'm like, what does that mean? You have Swap watches it later? It's like an NPC. Every 20 minutes, he swaps out his loot. <laughs> he's a <like>, Khajiit, yeah. <laughs> Today, uh, I was talking to Sam in his stream, and he's like, oh, I'm a 10. And everyone was like, no, you're like a 1. And he's like, oh, do do it. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know that. What's the what's the anime trope about the person who's like has a really soft interior, but like a hard fake out yeah. exterior. Yeah, That's he sad. definitely he definitely puts up the like hard exterior, but every you can see right through it. Everyone can see through it. <laughs> and yeah. he's uh, he's doing that, and then he's like, oh, because I was like, oh, I'm definitely. Uh, more intimidating than Sam, and he's like, "Crendel, are you like homeless? Nobody, nobody wants to come up to you. You're so homeless." And then everyone was like, "Well, that would probably mean he's more intimidating." That's he's very like, intimidating. Yeah, yeah, you look and then, like, and then you look he like flipped it, Jesus. and he's like, "That's very intimidating." <laughs> but then he, I was like, "Yeah, that means I'm more intimidating." And he's like, "No, what? If, if anything, I'm more homeless." And then he started trying to be the homeless person, and I was like, "No, you can't flip the script." Then we had a battle. He's like, how long's your hair? I bet my hair's longer, but my hair was longer. And so... Uh, <laughs> what is happening was... <laughs> between you two? This is a rivalry like... I do not like. It I don't like rivalry. this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's going places. I also think this is skewed. I think it comes down to the mm. bigger you get... Uh, let's say you're a Jacksepticeye. guy. Sorry, Sean. If you're, if you're <laughs> listening, you're not. Um, <laughs> but like watching him, he goes to events... And there's like all these screaming girls. And you and I were there that one time when we were when oh, yeah. we videoed it, right? <laughs> and then the one tried to actually there's her dad and her, and then there was a the bad time. Yes, I'll never forget that. Where he was like, Well, you guys are close enough. <laughs> I'll never forget it's that. Like the worst we were just really. like, sorry, we're not Jack. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. Um so but like you saw that his whole thing was like he said hi to the fans. He did his time, and then security ushered him out. Yeah, <laughs> like he vanished. There was no. You got your like minute with him, and then you had to go. Maybe less yeah. than a minute, and then you had to go. With us, we were like <laughs> awkwardly keeping people there, <laughs> and, like <laughs> having conversations, and be like, "Yeah, we're fine. Don't worry about it. See you later. Have a good one." And I think it comes with the fact that at a certain point you hit that fame threshold where you have to kind of be a standoffish dick. I don't mean that like Sean's a dick. I'm saying like you have to be like, all right, next, 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 next. It's not that you want to. Yeah, you have to. Get to. to everybody. Yeah, and I think that ups your your score a little bit. Because think- at that point people are like, oh, I don't want to talk to him because I'll be, you know, you have to be important to talk to him because he only gives you a few minutes. Meanwhile, you and I are like, Hey, you bring me a fair. drink, you goofball. This is like 80% you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like right, there to, Yeah, because like I'm there, I'm doing my thing, but I'm, I hit a point where you can just keep going and I'm like, I need to like, just go lay down. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. It's, I'm, I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> just fine with me. But I just, I can't do that. I need like recharge time or I'm, I'm out. You know, I know. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's really funny. 
I just feel put on blast. You were like, no, nope, that's all you, really. <laughs> like, it is. <"Aw." laughs> <laughs> um, I want to share something with you. Okay. Uh, it's totally unrelated, but I know I forget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it made me laugh because it's just, it's insane. So I listen to uh, when I'm like in the kitchen trying to cook. Oh, my God. Speaking of which, <laughs> um, another tangent. Today, I tried to make a uh, like a weird vegetable, like a veggie dish, right? Okay. And it was it was supposed to be a vegan thing, so it had uh, it was supposed to have vegan chicken. And I was like, well, I'll give it a shot, whatever. It looks good. Everyone says it's good. I'll try it. The box says that the vegan chicken is made with the same process they use to make their vegan sausage. And I was like, okay. I guess that means something. And I, I think that was supposed to be a selling point. Everyone was like, it's very, very, their vegan sausage is very good. So the chicken is just as good. And I was like, okay. So I, I cooked this thing. And I want to tell you something. Their vegan sausage is very good because that's what it tasted like. It tasted <laughs> like sausage in the shape of chicken. And I was like, huh. this is unpleasant. Because it's supposed to be in like a, like a stir fry thing. So <laughs> it was sausage stir fry. I was not feeling it. Huh. I I had a few bites and was like, well, lesson learned. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I would rather eat tofu than eat. Uh, I guess like normal tofu than eat whatever the hell that was. It was bad. Anyway, <laughs> while I was cooking that, I was listening to the radio, and a commercial came on for the local cable company here, uh, Spectrum, which is terrible. Um, right. And the ad was. Do you video game to your thumbs hurt? Do you video game to your eyes burn? Then you're a speed freak. And I was like, what? what? <laughs> that shit? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I don't think that means what you think that means. A speed freak. You're a speed freak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I get it. If like, I if I were to say go to go to Google, type in speed freak. See right. speed freak. See what pops up. One who habitually misuses amphetamines, especially <laughs> methamphetamines. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yeah. A drug addict. Yep. <laughs> like speed demon. A speed demon is someone who drives fast, right? Mm. Or someone who goes very going very fast. Yeah. The connotation of a freak is literally <laughs> someone who is like Tripping all the balls. Oh, yeah. That sounds like they don't know what they're talking about. It sounds like someone thought that was a really clever ad. Like, you need speed. Get it, guys? We'll call them speed freaks. But it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> and so every time I hear it now, I'm just like, I think they're saying that I'm addicted to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, you video game too much, you're addicted to drugs. Is it the point where now it's like mainstream to just be like, are you a hardcore gamer? Like, I just hate the term gamer in general now. It's uh, an agreed. awful term. Agreed. Like, uh, you, you're ga it's like you don't just, you don't watch TV. Like, all right, are you, are you a watcher? This is stupid as shit. <laughs> well, I mean, well, at least one person is. <laughs> in yeah. a small town somewhere, there is at least one watcher. <laughs> These are gamers. They like gaming. I just, I hate it. Yeah, I, I, it's it feels... I don't want to say a little derogatory, but it feels like it's both condescending and not. Yeah. Like, oh, you're a gamer. Like, you're no, one of those not gamers. I'm going to get you a shirt that says hardcore gamer at play. <laughs> <laughs> okay, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I hate when they do that. When they, But that's the same thing when I think of influencers, right? Just oh, yeah. words where they try to categorize people and you're like, yo. No, not all of us have influence. <laughs> Many of us have none. It's, yeah, it's like, imagine, it's the same thing. If you were to start calling, like, old people, like, yeah, hey, you're a watcher. You watch that television. Instead of just being like, oh, you watch TV, right? Oh, you play video games. Like, ah, hey, you're a gamer. Any type of categor categor categorizing that's in, like, a negative aspect is just, you know. <laughs> By the way, Categor. Sounds like a great name for like a giant <laughs> buff cat. Category. <laughs> Category. <laughs> I choose you. Be my noble steed. You jump on the back. Category. <laughs> we ride. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. Category does not move today. <laughs> he chooses to stay still. 
The buff door would ride Category. That's oh, yeah, what, no doubt. oh my god, you're He Man. Oh, like why did I, I never gave, think of this uh, before? It's like if I gave Cat like human growth hormones. <laughs> why would you give him human growth? <laughs> so you can become why not cat growth hormones. Uh those aren't strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Would he just acquire the English language <laughs> from the human growth hormone? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He'd be like, "Greetings, master. It is I, Category. <laughs> That's his real name. His real his real name is Category, but you call him Cat for short." Yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, I don't uh, know where uh, where we're going anymore? You know where we're going? Straight to advertisement town. <laughs> hey, everybody. Do you love smelling good? Yeah. Do you love going to conventions showered and deodorized? Because half the PAX people is don't. coming up, and boy, <laughs> we would love we would love for you to do that. So that's why we're advertising Native. That's right. Native is the place where you can take care of your body and the environment around you. Did you know? That most conventional deodorants contain aluminum or aluminium that plugs up your sweat glands in order to prevent you from sweating. Ugh. Natives deodorants are made without aluminum so you can feel better about what you're putting on your body. It's safe. It is formulated without parabens or talc. It's also vegan and it's not tested on animals. I don't recommend eating it, but it's vegan. <laughs> It's ingredients you know, everything is something you've heard of, like coconut oil or shea butter. Uh, if you wear deodorant every day, right? Right? When you wear deodorant every day, you should be able to understand what is in it and what you put on yourself. Plus, it works. I'm wearing some right now. It smells great. Um, and it comes in amazing scents. There's coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, uh, eucalyptus and mint. There's all sorts of different ones. And what's great is they have things like uh, body washes. I just used one of their body washes today. They have a wide variety of options for men, women, even teens. They also offer an unscented option and baking soda free formula for those with sensitivities. Free shipping on every order. And Native offers a 30 day free return and exchange in the US. Still not convinced? Trust me on this, you will love it. They have 9,000 five star reviews from happy customers who are customers from happy customers who are making the switch to native. You should too. Anyway, right now, you can get 20% off your first purchase at nativedeodorant.com using promo code COX during checkout. That's right, nativedeodorant.com, promo code COX to get 20% off at checkout. Also today, we're brought to you by Quip. Quip are the makers of the best electronic toothbrush that you can get in your life. It is the one single thing in your day to make your brushing habits better and to make your smile better. It is genius. It is an electronic toothbrush that vibrates and every 30 seconds gives like a and lets you know 30 seconds have gone by. And after two minutes, it finishes. And it gives you the exact amount of time you need every time you brush your teeth. And it, you know, imagine quadrants in your mouth. Like uh, lower left or upper right. And you can spend 30 seconds on each quadrant and get in there and get all the... Oh, it's great. It's great for your teeth. It is recommended not only by me, but actual real dentists. Also, Quip comes with a floss dispenser with pre-marked string that helps you use just enough. Look at them. They're doing all the work for you. All you got to do is put in the time. Plus, you get a fresh brush head, more floss, toothpaste refills to your door every three months, which is the recommended time for when you should switch out your brush head. So your routine is always right and up to date. Over 3 million healthy mouths use Quip, and you can start now for just 25 bucks. Go to getquip.com slash Crendor right now. And you'll get your first refill for free. That's right. Go to getquip, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash Crendor to get your mouth right. Because Quip is the good habits company. And they're making good habits for you right now. All right, Crendor, let's go to chapter number seven of the Sky of the Crendor. How's that traffic out there? 
Chop, bap, 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 in the sky. We flying today. Wait, we flying today? I meant to say tonight. <laughs> oh my and, god. Uh, all right, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna have to land this real quick. Uh, I'm not flying to die. Actually, let's change our mindset. All right, we're not flying to die. We're flying. Flying to die it. sounds like a Lana Del Rey song. <laughs> I fly to die in the summertime. Da, 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 da. That's still too uh, upbeat. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it sounds like a, like a Die Hard type of movie, like Fly to Die. No, it sounds too romantic. There's a little romantic, like <laughs> Death Flight is the movie. Fly to Die is the oh, song yeah. Lana Del Rey sings for the movie. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, I, got, I keep forgetting the, the helicopter needs to go. Sorry. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this is uh. Also, this isn't a helicopter. This is a chopper copter. This is a big time chopper up in the scopter. Uh, I don't know what that means. I don't know what any of this means. The traffic's good. Back to you. Thanks, Crendor. Now let's go to Crendor the weather desk. How's that weather? Weather desk. All right. Time for some. Oh, that's what you know. What I was gonna say because I just thought up. You know how you were saying earlier, like you saw pictures of people like climbing mountains and go around doing stuff on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I have the exact opposite reaction. I'll be like someone being like, "Oh man, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro today," and I'd be like, oh, "Thank God, that's not me." <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of work. I travel area, do it. But if I get a headache, you like run out of Advil or something. No thanks. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Let's go to uh, 77541. Freeport, Texas. Well, well. Well, well. If it ain't Freeport, Texas, 64 degrees, cloudy, feels like 64, high, low, 64, UV index 0 to 10. Right now, you got southeast winds, 12 miles an hour, humidity 88%, dew point 6 to 1, pressure 29.98. Seems like a lot of pressure, but I don't know nothing about pressure. Tonight, you got showers late, 64, 50% chance. Monday, 75 degrees, but an 80% chance of them thunderstorms. Considerable cloudiness, occasional rain. Shower after midnight, you got thunder possible. Low 64, south-southeast winds, 10, 20 miles an hour. Chance of rain, about 50%. Monday night, you kick things off, 56 degrees. Nice, cool, calm, collected. Tuesday, you're going to hit some of them AM clouds, PM sun, just like my favorite gas station, AM, PM. I don't even know if they exist anymore. I just know I saw commercials of them a few years ago, and that's the weather. I like Country Crendor. <laughs> yeah. Country Crendor seems like a fun guy to hang around with. He's like, come with AM, PM. Going to get ourselves a 52-ounce soda. <laughs> Hell yeah, love me good soda. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk sports. Sports. Welcome to Sports Dusk. Hey, everybody, it's time for a sport. Uh, let's see. Not too much going on in sports, but there is the XFL. <laughs> I love how you're like, not much is happening in sports, but there is the XFL. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, Houston Roughnecks beat the Tampa Bay Vipers 34-27. Whoa! Dallas Renegades beat the Seattle Dragons. The St. Louis Battlehawks beat the New York Guardians. And the Wildcats of Los Angeles are beating the D.C. Defenders that are currently playing right now. Let's see. Uh, Taking a look at the standings now. Looks like the Roughnecks are 3-0. And the D.C. Defenders are the only other undefeated team, and they're getting blown out over in Los Angeles. So it looks like it's going to be uh, Houston Roughnecks' best team in the XFL. Damn. Well, there you go. And uh, the worst Crendor team. would be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst team is the Tampa Bay Vipers. Uh, so not, not too good. Why are they called them. the Vipers? Well, none, of these, none of these seem to like make sense to their locations. Yeah, wouldn't it be like the... Tampa Bay Heat or something. Or the yeah, I don't, Tampa but even Bay. the Buccaneers, I guess they don't really get. At least they're by water. I, don't know I guess if, you're right. I guess you're Florida? right. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they just slap some names. Yeah, I feel like Florida's like, we really don't have an identity except for like crazy. Like the LA Wildcats? Why the Wildcats? La- it's lazy. That just it's lazy. Just reminds me of the uh, the Simpsons. Where it's like, who are we? The Wildcats. Who are we gonna beat? The Wild. The Wildcats. Wild <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the XFL. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is our big news story of the day? 
big news story of the day is actually a pretty big news story because everyone's tweeting it at us. Uh, <laughs> I think um, I know what this is. It is the Mad Mike Hughes story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did we yeah. talk about Mad Mike? I don't like remember what this was, but ago? I remember that the story was that he was going to prove the Earth was flat by launching himself in a, in a steam-powered rocket into space Yeah. Uh, to prove the Earth was flat. And at the time, we said this was a terrible idea. <laughs> this was one of the worst ideas we had ever heard. <laughs> and I shouldn't be laughing because it's actually very sad. Yeah, when was this? I don't know. If uh, if I had to guess, I'd say it's like a year and a half. Ago I would say something. it was maybe three months ago. <laughs> I would say <laughs> well, maybe summer, maybe at <laughs> latest summertime last year. All right, that's probably more accurate. Either way, <laughs> a year um, and a half. What? How do you live? Every time I'm like, remember that? And you're like, was that 1983? I'm like, no. I think I overestimate. You underestimate. It's probably somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yeah, it's probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, sure. So Mad Mike Hughes, 64, died after crash landing his steam-powered rocket shortly after takeoff. Near I shouldn't Barstow. laugh, but like, guys, <laughs> we all knew this was going to happen. Yeah, it was. Why didn't no one try happen. to stop him? Why, where are his loved ones? You can't Why stop him, like... man. You can't stop Mad Mike. <laughs> uh, a, video. <laughs> a video on social media oh. shows a rocket being fired into the sky before plummeting to the ground nearby. Hughes was well known for his belief that the Earth was, Earth was flat. He hoped to prove his theory by going to space. Saturday's launch was reportedly filmed as part of a homemade astronauts, a TV series about amateur rocket makers to be aired on the U.S. Science Channel. The, pro uh, the project had to be carried out on a tight budget. Ugh. It's not good for the budget. There's a reason why. There's a reason why <laughs> NASA is like a billion dollar enterprise. <laughs> With the help of his partner, Waldo Stinks. <laughs> what? Hold on. What's this guy's name? <laughs> Waldo Stinks. This can't be real. <laughs> Waldo Stinks. <laughs> Waldo Stinks. What? When I type in Waldo Stinks, the top result is Waldo Stinks' daughter. What? <laughs> yeah. On. Waldo Stinks. That's, what's funny is you just simply can't find him. <laughs> I know. All right, there's his daughter, I guess. It's I like the top find, three results are his daughter. <laughs> on the what real rocket man dot com. <laughs> what the sh <laughs> Stephanie Barden, Waldo's daughter. Where's Waldo? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh, there's Waldo. <laughs> it took you it takes you a minute every time. <laughs> yeah, it always takes a little bit to find Waldo. Oh my god. Uh Waldo looks exactly what I thought he would look like. Uh I gotta find him. Images. There he uh -oh. is. <laughs> oh my god, yeah he does. Waldo Stakes looks exactly like what Waldo Stakes would look like. That's Waldo's His, daughter. She looks like a person I actually dated once kind of <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, like maybe what, two thousand twelve ish? <laughs> yeah. I think you're uh, I think you're actually spot on. <laughs> um, <laughs> so where am I? With the help of his partner, Waldo <laughs> Stakes, Hughes was trying to reach an altitude of five thousand feet while riding a steam powered rocket, according to space.com. In the video of the launch, a parachute can be seen trailing behind the rocket, apparently deployed too early, seconds after takeoff. In the tweet, the science channel said Hughes had died pursuing his dream. Of saying, proving the Earth was flat? This is dream. San Bernardino I... County Sheriff's Department said its officers were called to a rocket launch around 14 local time. Sheriff's Office said a man was pronounced deceased after the rocket crashed in the open desert. His publicist confirmed to U.S. media outlets it was the pilot who had been killed. Darren Schuster, a former rep for Hughes, told TMZ the daredevil was, quote, one of a kind. Quote, when God made Mike, he broke the mold. Oh, no. The man was the real deal and oh, lived no. to push the edge. He wouldn't have gone out any other way. Rip, he said. Had Mike and his assistants built the homemade rocket in his backyard. Uh, Oh, they did build it in his backyard. I was about to say, what? <laughs> yeah, built it around $18,000 for that rocket. Uses steam ejected through a nozzle for propulsion. Oh, Neat. so maybe Waldo Stakes was the guy who helped build the rocket. 
because oh. I don't see any connection. I've been looking at Waldo Stakes trying to figure out how he's connected to this. Mostly so I can justify the fact that I'm kind of attracted to his daughter. <laughs> and so I want to make sure they're not crazy. But it turns out that... Um, they are crazy. No, I, he, he Basically, he designs <laughs> like vehicles to break land speed records. Mm. So he's associated with all sorts of things where he like builds giant rocket-looking cars in order to... Uh, like he's trying to break the 2,000 mile per hour land speed record. I so I guess he knows how to build things that look like rockets. And I guess he helped this guy build, he helped Mad Mike build his thing. That makes sense then, I see. Basically, I'm just saying, uh, Waldo's daughter. What's her name? Waldina? Stephanie. <laughs> Waldina Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie Waldo Stakes. <laughs> Call me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh my God. This story, I found the old article. I was right. November 27th, 2017. But when did we find the article? I'm pretty sure it was around there. Maybe like early 2018 then. All right. All right. I'm telling you, it was like two years. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know what I believe anymore. <laughs> uh, either way, the daredevil who lived in Apple Valley made headlines internationally when he announced his intention to prove his theory that the Earth was flat. In March last year, Hughes, Hughes managed an altitude of 1870 feet before the plane's parachute landing with a bump. Oh, maybe that was it, March of last year. Maybe we covered this multiple times. That's what I'm saying. I think, I think that's what we, we talked about last time. Yeah, I think you're right. So it was like a year ago. All right, yeah, we're in the middle. Uh, speaking afterwards, he said, quote, Am I glad I did it? Yeah, I guess. I'll feel it in the morning. I won't be able to get out of bed. At least I can go home and have dinner and see my cats tonight. He set a Guinness World Record in 2002 for longest limousine jump over 31 meters in a Lincoln Town Car stretched limo. All right. Well, I mean, that's a thing. <laughs> I feel Man. bad because it's very, it's not a good story, yeah. but we had to follow up on it. Everyone wanted us to. Yeah, we had to A man to died, but it. like also don't do rocketry, y'all. He's a mad man. Like, <laughs> you know, if he's, if you're in the, the secret lab long enough, something's going to blow up on you. You're right. They did call him, they called him a mad man. <laughs> when that happens, when that's your fate, you have to, like, maybe turn it back a little bit. <laughs> maybe get the hell out of there. When someone, when they call you madman, it's time to run. <laughs> let's see. Let's get a let's get a happy story. To spice this up. Yes. Uh. All right. Oh man, we got two options. One is, it feels like a hot tub. Wendy's employees fired after man takes bath in restaurant sink. And then we've also got Florida man tried to escape cops by stripping naked. Ribeyes fell out of his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Both these stories are good. I'll let you decide. All right. Oh, wait, this one, uh, the Wendy's one's really short. They'll do both. Greenville, Michigan. Several employees have been fired over a viral video that shows a man bathing in a Wendy's restaurant sink. The video has been making its rounds on social media, shows a shirtless man inside the restaurant's kitchen. Employees can also be heard laughing while another person in uniform throws something into the sink and yells, Wash yourself! In the video, the shirtless man is seen scrubbing himself, saying, <laughs> Feels like a hot tub. Since the video is uploaded, it has been viewed thousands of times now. Many people are calling for employees to be held accountable. I mean, uh, I don't they, wish they bad should on be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wish bad on anybody, but I sure hope they get fired, said customer Michael Guerrera. Fast food chain later released a statement in regard to the video, saying, This egregious behavior is completely unacceptable and uncounter our safety, training, and operational standards. Please don't sue us. The health department has also since evaluated the restaurant and everything's been sanitized. Can I tell you, it's a little weird that every time I hear a story about someone either finding a body part or <laughs> bathing in stuff or right. doing something where it's always a Wednesdays. Wednesdays. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me today. It's always I can't Wednesdays. talk. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's always a Wednesdays. <laughs> always Wednesdays. <laughs> also, this guy 
that's like in the hot tub well the sink or whatever like what's he expect it to feel like like you, you pour hot water and soap in a thing and he's like wow it feels like a hot bath like no shit that's what it is Except i, you're in a I sink. can't believe that it's just every time it's a wendy's every time it really you never is, hear about yeah. the people that are like at McDonald's, a man got naked. It took a bath. McDonald's oh, people go and have fights. Ronald but no McDonald's, one's taking a bath anywhere. Ronald, Ronald McDonald disciplines you hard. He doesn't just <laughs> he doesn't just fire you. He comes after you. You find you wake up. You see like a clown head in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands behind your back. <laughs> You're coming with me. And, Don't uh, look at me. A week later, he was. Gone, and nobody knows where he went. Yeah, he was, he was gone. That was it. Yeah, Ronald, <laughs> Ronald goes McDonald hard. doesn't fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel like you don't hear stories about like Jack in the Box or rallies because no one really cares. But oh, you yeah. know that's happened at a rallies. You know someone yeah. put like their balls in the meat. <laughs> yeah, you know that's, that's just, happened. It's at a rallies, oh for sure. <laughs> a rallies yeah, or checkers, as they're called in the South. Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, for sure. That's a whole different story. Uh, <laughs> all right, then we, and we've got Florida man tried to escape cops by stripping naked. Ribeyes fell out of his pants. Daytona Beach, a shoplifting suspect <laughs> trying to get away from a grocery store, stripped naked and stakes tumbled out of his pants. Police say they found I- Stefan Short, 28, of Deland, Florida, running out of the store in the buff. And when he refused to stop, officers tasered him. <laughs> <laughs> the incident occurred Friday night at the Save a Lot in Delane. Officers were sent to the store and were told Short was being pinned to the ground by a manager and a civilian, but he was fighting them, the police report said. Witnesses reported to police that in an attempt to get away, Short wriggled out of his clothes. Police said Short stole four packs of ribeye steaks valued at $41.24. Damn. Short was charged. I know. Short was charged with resisting an officer without violence, resisting a store employee while committing a theft and first-degree petty theft. He was held without bail Monday at the Volusia County Branch Jail. An you officer, have footage of him stuffing those steaks down? I want to know how he tried to do this. Yeah, those, those are like steaks. Those are like big steaks, right? Yeah, like how did he think he was going to pull this off? Did he just walk up and do it and hope he was going to do it quickly enough to leave? How did he, or was he sneaky where he's like walking around the store and he put one down and he walked by again and got another one and put another one down? Like how did he pull this off? Because this yeah. is ballsy. Four steaks? Who's he trying to feed? Why did he put them in his pants? Well, I mean, there's plastic wrap, so. Couldn't he have just like used a bag? Like, just, like, bring a bag, and then someone probably, like, oh, he's probably, like, buying the steaks, putting them in his bag, and then, he'd, like, he'd have a better chance walking out. But here's the thing. Normal-looking dude. So you're right. He could have just gone in with a bag and, like, been like, oh, I, I forgot a thing or so. I don't know. Listen, I pay money for my stuff, so I don't know. Well, if you don't have the money and you want steaks, I guess you're going <laughs> to steal them. My question is... I feel like there's a better solution than getting four at a time. Yeah. Four at a time down your pants <laughs> seems like uh, they're going to recognize that. Yeah, they're going to recognize that. That's a lot of pants steaks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> an officer arriving at the store saw coupon books and packs of meat scattered on the store's floor and a naked short running. Store manager reported that Short was a regular shoplifter at the store, and that when ah, other there shop- we go. All right. <laughs> when other shoppers reported they saw him stuffing meat in his pants, <laughs> the manager stopped him. Short was taken mm. to the hospital after it was discovered that a taser prong struck him in the genitals. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's where it ends. Oh, uh, he's gonna need that cold meat down there. He's gonna like get me yep. a frozen steak for my balls. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna need that one. That's that's gonna sting for a while. <laughs> oh man, that guy, his testicles went through a range of emotions. He had cold meat down there, <laughs> and I got shocked. That poor man. That poor man. That's that's a lot that happened in a short period of time. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, that's it for us. Thank you so much for listening or watching or however you're enjoying this podcast. Grandor, hit up the socials. Socials. Go to our things. Hit the like and the subscribe and the follow. We got YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast where you can see all these podcasts on YouTube. We got YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor 
where you can see the animations on YouTube. We got Spotify, we got iTunes, we got everything. Just search Cox and Crendor. We also got our own channels. We got YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox, YouTube.com slash Crendor, Facebook.com slash Jesse Cox, Facebook.com slash Crendor, Twitter.com slash Jesse Cox, Twitter.com slash Crendor, Instagram.com slash Crendor is taken, Instagram.com slash Notorious Cox, and probably Twitch.tv slash Jesse Cox, Twitch.tv slash Crendor, and I'll notice whatever else we got that I don't know about. Well, we probably should. There are <laughs> things, but okay. Uh, anyway, that's it for us. We'll see you guys next time. And as always, bing. Gotta go to Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs>